And I just want to add one final reflection from a Druid perspective, that Michael, the only possible archetype or deity figure that, that could equate to Michael in the Celtic tradition is Luch, the god of light. Because Michael is the warrior among the angels, and Luch is the warrior among the Tuathadanan, the one with the long spear. And the Archangel Michael is also shown with a great spear. And Luch works for justice and truth and has many, 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 many qualities, as, as Michael does. And it's the origin, I think, in the Arthurian legends of Lancelot. Lancelot is the, the, um, the hero um, who works as, at the right hand of the king, in effect. So in the Arthurian legends, which are a, a coded latter transmission of Druid wisdom, with Merlin as the Archdruid, the, the image of Luke as the, the warrior in the, the cause of light, who's unvanquishable and invincible, comes through as Lancelot. Anyway, Luke is the, um, you know, performs that same function. It's an interesting that Lunasa, um, which comes in the first glimpse of the harvest at the very beginning of August, and the month of August is named after the god Lu in the ancient Celtic um, year. Here we celebrate St. Michael's Day at the very end of the autumn harvest season, as we're celebrating the very end of the summer, effectively, as we're coming up to the start of the new year at Samhain. So in the, in the Druid year, both St. Michael and Lu fall at the, in the autumnal period, and it gives us a chance to reflect on what we've done that year, that summer. What fruits, what harvest have we brought in? What have we gathered from the garden, from the forest, from the fields, either metaphorically or, or, or actually? So I think Luke is the equatable figure to St. Michael. Um, and, you know, as Druids, one uses thought power rather than physical force to achieve justice. And the reason I think the Druids accepted Christianity is they recognized in him someone who was working with that energy. He was working with as much force and strength as a great warrior, like a warrior king, a messiah king, and yet chose to use nonviolence, chose to use thought power, prayer, spiritual energy, which is how Druids work. We don't use physical force. You know, it's, it's a sign of weakness to need that. You should always work for justice, truth and reconciliation with your, even your so-called enemies. And this is why I strongly believe that we've gone down the wrong road in Britain by using physical force in Iraq, in Afghanistan and so on. What we should have done is talked to the intellectual leaders, the spiritual leaders of, of these these movements such as the Taliban and tried to straighten them out, tried to actually have heart-to-heart -heart discussions, bring in leading Islamic theologians, bring in Islamic philosophers and, and get agreement on how we can live together these different religions on the planet. How can Christians coexist in peace with Muslims, with Jews, with other religions? It was done for 200 years when Britain was in India, in Pakistan, and somehow the British managed to bring a harmony between the different religions. Somehow we have to remember that the Commonwealth still exists, and we should reflect on the work of the Commonwealth Interfaith Network, that that dream, that vision, I'm speaking here as a Canadian as well as British, still stands for the possibility of peace between these different faiths. And the Archangel Michael, in a sense, is, is something that transcends Christian, Jewish, Muslim splits. You know, we should, we should always be humble. Our religions are just little vessels for grace. They're not the grace itself. The grace transcends that, just as light transcends any one tree it falls upon. Each tree is different, yet nourished by the one light. So, 
Michaelmas, which begins the academic term in universities around the world, including the Green University here, is a good time to reflect on that. How can we receive that one light in harmony with our fellows?